Hello everyone. As we mentioned before, one of the conditions for Ukraine to join either EU or NATO was to work on its corruption scores. So if you haven't seen, um, for EU specifically, there is like a score sheet on which the countries are Rated. And there's all sorts of categories. There's rows upon rows. So there's the economic state, um, political state, stability, um, inclusion, diversity, um, human rights, that type of stuff. And yes, corruption is up there. And unfortunately, Ukraine has an issue with that. So as part of that effort, Ukraine has been constantly implementing measures to fight corruption and unfortunately there's been plenty to find this is yet another example um, two senior defense ministry officials uh, were uh, detained on suspicion of embezzling um, seven million dollars earmarked for uh, buying bulletproof vests for the Ukrainian army I don't need to tell you that anyone undermining their own country in this fashion at the time of war is the absolute scum of the war of earth. And I hope they, they get what they deserve. Um, they should be fortunate. They should be thanking their lucky stars that they are not living uh, under the Soviet rule because... There were times in the Soviet Union where uh, sabotage in one's own army during the time of war uh, held with it a tribunal and uh, an execution to follow shortly after. So there's a chance these guys are going to get a trial, they might go to jail, etc., etc. For now, they've lost their jobs. So this is from the part of the news that talks about Ukraine's constant uh, fight with corruption. Russia seeks to return to UN Human Rights Council. And uh, it's funny that uh, the two headlines should follow one another, you know, just as we we're talking about Russia possibly returning to the Human Rights Council. It is also... Um, unlawfully detaining the U.S. reporter and a number of other people, foreign nationals. And um, if anyone even remotely considering this, as if it wasn't bad enough to have Russia as part of the U.N. and as part of um, U.N. Security Council, ask yourself this. Do people who do this deserve to have any impact on the global human rights policies. So this is the continuing tragedy of the strikes against the village of Rosa. If you recall, first they hit a grocery store, killed a bunch of people, dozens, including a child, as well as um, they were wounded, uh, among whom there's also a child. Then they hit the funeral for the victims. And when they were asked, why did they do this completely hideous, horrible, inhumane thing? They said that um, they were neo-Nazis there and that people present at the funeral included men of uh, conscription age who could potentially become Ukrainian soldiers and join the Ukrainian armed forces. And thus, the funeral of the people they had slaughtered was a legitimate target. If you don't believe me, look this up. This is across multiple uh, sources, including uh, UN transcripts. This, this particular piece of bullshit was... Uh, uh, pushed by Russia's UN representative, Nebesna. Look it up. Should these people be allowed anywhere near global human rights policies?